Hello, and welcome to this lesson in which we're going to design a flip-flop with load enable and implement it in Verilog. So let's take a look at our flip-flop. In the previous video, we talked about the structure of the flip-flop that we wanted. Right? It had input D, it had output Q, and it had a clock. And whenever the clock had a rising edge, the value at D was loaded into Q. Q was equal to D. What I want to do here is create what's called a load enable. If enable equals true, or one, then Q equals D, else no change happens. And as we'll see in Verilog, this is pretty easy to do. So let's jump right in. I've got Visual Studio Code open. Let's go ahead and create a new file. Let's call this flipflopen.v. And let's go flip flop Ian is going to take inputs D and enable and the clock and still have output Q. Now, just like before, input D and EN and clock and output reg Q. Like the other flip-flop, we want to trigger at the positive edge, the rising edge of the clock. So we'll say always at pause edge clock. And here's where it gets a little bit different from the last one. And the last one we just said here, Q equals D. And that loaded Q with the value of D at the rising edge of the clock. But what we want to do now is say if EN. So if enable is true, then Q equals D. And that lets us set this enable on this input. So only when enable is equal to one will this transfer take place. Otherwise, nothing will happen. That's all we need to do to add an enable to this flip-flop. Let's go ahead and build the test bench. So I'll create a new file. We'll call this flip-flop entb.v. And make sure to include our flip-flop module. So include flip-flop en.v. I also need to make sure I set the time scale. I like to use one nanosecond and one nanosecond. Now let's create our test bench module. Test bench in module. So let's see, reg d in and clock and wire q. Now my unit under test, flip flop en ut. Let's make sure we've got the right d in clock q d in clock q semicolon. Now let's run the clock. Always begin and end. Clock equals not clock. And let's run it for, let's do this. Let's do 15 nanoseconds here. Now the last thing we need to do is make sure we actually set some initial values in these registers. Equals zero, especially for the clock, otherwise the clock won't actually have anything to toggle off of. So now we're ready to run the test. Begin and end. Create our waveform files. Flip flop en.vcd. Get the variables. Zero. Test bench. Now, what do we want to do? We can basically run the same test that we did in the previous one, except what I want to do now is I want to run it once with enable equals zero. 
to like 20. Let's put these back in. Um, no, I changed mine. Let's do 40. 40 and 40. And then we'll run that sequence again with enable equals one. So the first time through, nothing should happen. And the second time through, um, D should be able to update. And we'll let it know we're done by saying finish. And we should be ready to execute this simulation. So we'll pull up the PowerShell. I Verilog option O. Flip flop en dot vvp from flip flop en tv dot v. Oop. And we've got a syntax error at line 28. Let's take a look. Oh, forgot the semicolon. Save the file. Bring back the PowerShell. There we go. Now no errors. VVP. Flip-flop e in dot VVP. Created our file. GTK wave. Flip-flop e in dot VCD. Bring that guy over. Grab our stuff in the test bench. Append. And let's take a look. So the entire time enable is equal to zero, nothing is in Q. Notice that Q is set equal to zero the entire time. And it's not until enable goes to one and D is equal to zero. And here on this rising edge, Q updates with the value of D and goes to zero. And here on the rising edge, when it goes to one, it clicks over and Q is equal to one, and then it drops back down to zero. And on the next rising edge, we see Q drop down to zero. So here, especially right here, we're able to see that without the enable being set at one, our flip-flop doesn't update. And so we've successfully created the enable here for this flip-flop. That's it for this lesson. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Thank you.